In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to customise the Traffic System Vehicle class. Under Prefabs, Vehicles, Types, you'll find a full car test, so drop that in. Turn him around so he faces the right way. Okay, what you'll find with our full test car is there's two colliders on this car in the in the root of the game object. One, two colliders. Then there's a traffic system vehicle script, a rigid body, and an audio source. And that's on the root of the object. And then underneath it, you can put all your renderers and all the effects for your car and whatnot. So you can customize that however you like, as long as the root director, uh, the root object is set up correctly. Um, instead of going down one of these parameters at a time, we just want to start off with the colliders to explain that first, so it'll make a little bit more sense later on. Every vehicle now has two colliders. Uh, the top one there, you can see is turning that on and off. That is the normal collider. It's the one that stays constant all the time while the, the, uh, while the vehicle is using the traffic system. And this one down here is the crash collider. You'll notice that one is flush with the ground, which is the crash collider, and the other one is just at the bottom of the body of the car or in between where the tires are. So there's a good gap between the car collider and the terrain collider. So this one's normal with the gap. This one's crash. Normal, crash. You'll find in our vehicle script, you've got a normal collider and you've got an on-crash collider. You want to assign the crash one to the on-crash and the normal one to just the normal collider. This uh, is because when a vehicle is using the traffic system and navigating from point to point, it uses the normal collider with a fair gap from the terrain collider below so that the vehicle doesn't get stuck on the terrain and then when an AI car, uh, when a, a player car runs into an AI car, it turns off the normal collider and switches on the crash collider which is flush with the ground so you don't get the, the car going halfway into the ground. Um, the crash collider stops it from doing that. As the car only stays crashed for a few seconds, it then switches back to using the normal collider and continues on its way. That's the reason for having two colliders. Um, it solves any problems where the car gets stuck on the train. Right, moving on. The next node is always the node that the car is trying to get to. And if you drop in your car like we have here, you're going to have to set the next node yourself. Let's find the next node, which is that one. And drop that on our script. So now the car is going to try and get to that node. If you use uh, the traffic system to spawn all your cars, you won't need to worry about that because it will assign the nodes required for each car to travel to. Uh, then we move on to offset um, position value. Now, your car is trying to get to that node, but what part of the car is trying to get to, to that node? And that is now determined by the offset position. You can see the, dis the new display we've added in the update. You can see where the offset position is. Um, at the moment, it's negative 0.4 on our vehicle and zero, 00 for X and Z but you can put this however you like uh, you can put it all the way down here which means your car is now going to drive like this along because it always tries to put that circle uh, that uh, yellow cube inside the node that it's trying to go to so that would be uh, where your car would end up before it tries to go to the next node then so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you offset that node correctly and the, the way you offset that node correctly is by making sure of two things. Make sure the center of the yellow cube is below the normal collider. If the cube is within the normal collider, so if we move that up, if we put it at zero, 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 which is always at the pivot point of our car, 
you'll find that now the car is going to try and get that yellow node to the blue node and the collider itself is below the train which won't happen so you're going to get this effect happening where it's trying to get to it but it just won't so you're going to get some weird behavior if that's set up incorrectly which means if the yellow cube or your offset position is above your normal collider you don't want that so we bring that down and the other thing to remember is to make sure that the center of that cube is flush with your wheels so that you'll always the car will always appear to be driving along the road and it won't have any collision problems so that's the one thing you want to set up correctly I mean if you really want to you can put it wherever you want and your car will always try and get to that position so you're going to see your car trying to get to that position now but obviously that would be silly so just make sure you have it in the center of your car and offset it correctly from the collider and in line with your by base of your wheels and you should be fine okay now we have that set up uh, there's a bit about speed that we've added so your car's got a minimum and maximum velocity that it travels at um, if the used road speed limits ticked then each speed each road piece has a speed limit attached to it and it will use this speed limit to determine its velocity uh, it won't ever go over the max velocity you set though unless you have ticked this on which means the max velocity will change if the speed limit increases so you've set your max velocity at 4 the speed limit might be 5 and therefore the car will go up to 5 because this is ticked here and says it can if you untick that it will always stay at the max velocity of 4 uh, velocity is just there to, to show you what velocity you're actually doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Acceleration rate, um, that's how fast uh, you go from zero to max velocity. Um, to uh, the, de the deceleration percentage is the percentage in which it will slow down. And it's a percentage of your acceleration rate, so it'll slow down a little bit easier than... Um, how fast it speeds up if you set that to 0 0.4. A random lane change, that means if there's multiple lanes that the car can go in, multiple blue lanes, or multiple pink lanes, not, not what you see here. Uh, if there's multiple blue lanes and there's a random lane change, percentage of say 100, you're going to see your car going from that lane to that lane to that lane to that lane, because it can, at each node point, um, randomly change lanes 100% of the time. You obviously don't want that. That's an example of what uh, random ch lane change can do. Uh, set that to zero if you never want it to randomly change lanes and it won't. Um, set it to whatever you want. Random chance to overtake. Uh, if one car is coming up to another car and it's within the threshold, um, it will decide whether it can randomly overtake that car or not if there's another lane free and this is set to 62.5% chance of, of uh, it overtaking the car in front of it. Chance of using an off-ramp, same thing if there's an off-ramp coming up then it's set to a 20% chance to use the off-ramp. Uh, chance of a direction change, this is a 33% chance currently of changing directions from blue to pink so if you come up to a light and instead of going right to stay in the blue lane, you go left and it'll change over to the pink lane. Things like that. Uh, it'll do itself. So you can set the percentage chances of, of changing direction. Our rigid body is just set from the uh, the parent of uh, the root itself. So that's been dragged up there. So we set our rigid body. The colliders we've explained now lights there's just a front and a back light and all these lights are uh, sprites at the moment but you can do whatever you like you can put spotlights you can put all sorts of things because all it is is game on it's being turned on and off and they're set in these two arrays then there's blinkers there's blinker speed how fast it'll blink <coughs> um, whether the front lights are enabled on start or not or whenever. The wheels for the front, so there's two wheels that are for the front, 
and two wheels for the rear. We've added them into the arrays as well. The axis in which the wheels will spin at, you can set that. The multiplier in which the speed of the wheels will go determ determined by the velocity of the car. So you may want the wheels to go faster. Um, so you can set that yourself um, to line up with the speed that the vehicle's going. Uh, now we start to get into things about checking for other cars on the road. This is the vehicle check distance. So you see this round red sphere here. The check distance, everything's done by the pivot point of your car. So you can see the check distance. This is where it'll start to look within the sphere to see whether there's another car, um, whether it's going to collide with a car and it'll, it'll slow right down. Uh, the radius of that can be changed as well. Usually the size of the front of the car is, is fine. Uh, vehicle check distance array. This is uh, additional check that we've added for version 2. You see the two red lines. Um, instead of just having a circle, we've extended the body out of the car. So you can see that uh, change the distance of that check as well. And each one of these has its own offset. So you can set it as wide as you want for the car. Uh, let's put that back. Obviously the same one for the other side. Then we've got our vehicle check distance um, mimic speed threshold. So 0 to 100% is the length of our red line. 0 to 100%. And at 5%, which is somewhere around here, we'll start to mimic the speed of the car in front, which is what that's set to. Vehicle check overtake on highway. This is... Um, the purple one that you see there, that if that's enabled then that's where the check happens to see whether there's a vehicle in front and if we can overtake into a new lane or not. Uh, you'll find that's the position that you'll want to put it at depending on how big your vehicle is. Uh, vehicle check radius, same thing, you can set that up, usually is the width of your, of your vehicle. Enable a middle check, if you have a really long vehicle you might want to put a middle check in the car. Um, but our car is rather small so we don't bother with that and that's the radius of it. Um, this is the intersection check distance so this yellow line in the middle here is for intersections and it makes sure that there's that the intersection is always clear before we actually try to drive through it because we don't want our cars getting stuck in the middle of an intersection because it will break our traffic system. So you can set that to however you want if you've got really small intersections you just set it small 14 seems to be an average size with our default intersections. Uh, the vehicle check radius uh, at the lights. <coughs> now there's a capsule you can set, which is down here further, which is what the traffic light detection is. We've got Rayan capsule on, so the capsule does apply in our case. We still haven't found a good way of, of rendering a capsule, so the only way to do this is to um, determine the uh, the distance, uh, the radius of your of your circles here you can set to the radius of this and also the uh, distance you can go off your ray cast. So if that's 14, you're looking around half of that, minus a couple, so about 6 is there. So our capsule is around the front of that car there. Um, that's the best we've got at the moment. Um, the capsule does help, so try to get that a bit accurate if you can. Vehicle check offset. Now this changes the whole thing. Maybe you've got a massive truck and you don't want um, it lined up directly with the pivot point. So you can put it all the way up or down, um, left or right. You decide where you want the offset to go. Uh, the wait time is... The wait time is how uh, often you want these checks to occur. If um, if you want them to occur all the time, set it to what the default is here, zero, zero, every frame. If you uh, want it to happen every second, and save on a bit of processing, then you can set it to one, one, or zero, one for randomness, whatever you want to do, but it's, it's just a, a little bit of a performance increase. Not much, though. Uh, strict crash check means that if you're if you've set the strict crash check on then it'll use the 
uh, on trigger stay and on collision stay methods which means if something's intersecting the AI like if there's a player intersecting the AI then the AI will treat it as it's continually crashed until the player goes away otherwise if it's not set um, and it's not strict then whenever the the player runs into the AI then it's on enter and then after a set amount of time it will decide to see if we can go again the time to wait after crash it's set to four seconds now so if the player did come in and hit the car then it would stop and then four seconds later it would try to go again uh, if it was set to strict then if the player came in and hit the car then it would it, this time it wouldn't start at all until the player had gone again so we've got traffic light cooldown the maximum time we cool down at a traffic light so the car might want to go through a traffic light you can set this to say three seconds so that it doesn't uh, get stuck at a particularly large traffic light if, if that was the case we've never had to use this but um, someone requested it so we put it in there for them uh, enable waiting destroy timer so if this is enabled and the car has waited for some reason more than 50 seconds we've set this to then the car will be destroyed uh, there's probably instances where the car will wait for a long period of time, especially at traffic lights, but it's up to you whether you want to set this on or off. It just um, takes ed caches away for things that get stuck. Uh, there's actually a stuck destroy timer max. This is if something really goes wrong and its, it's velocity is uh, not at zero and it's not going anywhere. So it'll wait five seconds and then it'll kill the object itself you can set that to whatever you want as well. Uh, kill on empty path, if there's a node that's not linked up the the vehicle will be destroyed if this object's, uh, if this boolean's ticked. Uh, then we've got our traffic light detection so you can either detect with ray and colli uh, collision which is the best way to detect but it's the most expensive. Uh, that's with your ray and your capture collider which we've set up before. You can do ray trace only uh, which will have different results. It won't. Uh, it'll only check to see if there's anything in the in the uh, middle of the of the intersection using that ray trace. It won't check outside that. So there's problems with that as well. But it's cheaper. Um, or you can go with just the capsule as well. The best one is ray and capsule. It's not that much more expensive. So we recommend using that. You can go with none if you really don't want them to stop at all and look for AI. That's the cheapest. Uh, our audio source is in here and it will be found automatically when you, your car starts so you don't need to assign it but you can if there was a different audio source you wanted to put in there in one of these objects you can as well uh, there's an engine default sound effect and a horn you can put your own in there as well that's all based around how far away you are from the uh, audio source but it all works uh, and it'll play the horn on crash tick that on and flash the lights on crash if you want that on as well. Um, rigid body is nothing special. Uh, we've got our gravity, make sure it's ticked off because uh, that'll only be handled when the AI or the player runs into the AI. This rigid body takes effect with gravity and the audio source is how far away you want it to be from your car. And that's pretty much the, uh, the tra traffic system vehicle script. Um, if you've got any questions about it, make sure you send them over in the forums or email us and uh, we'll get straight back to you about it. Cheers.